From oil to computer chips, we're all paying the price of import supply shortages. But a project plan for a small town in Osceola County may bring relief to another import that could drive up costs at the grocery store even more. It's fertilizer. News 8's Joe Lafergie has details now on this project. About 8,000 feet below where I'm standing lies a large deposit of a fertilizer component the U.S. now relies on other countries, including Russia, to provide. It's another planting season for farmer Tim Kreidoff. He's the second generation to farm this land, about 2,600 acres in Kent City. It's hard work every day, but good life. From weather to yields to commodity prices, every season brings on a new challenge. The latest, the cost of fertilizer, up an average of $115 an acre from this time last year, according to the Michigan Farm Bureau. Our costs are on these fertilizer ingredients and our chemistries and our fuel have gone up, you know, 100 to 250 percent. Right now, those increases are impacting Kritos' bottom line. Sooner or later, it's going to go up more at the store. And I know prices since the pandemic have already gone up in the grocery stores, but it's going to continue to go up if, if we don't make some changes to keep some of these costs in line. Part of the problem, potash, the potassium-rich mineral and a major component to fertilizers, is in short supply. The U.S. imports 96 percent of potash from other countries, including Belarus and Russia, prior to sanctions brought on by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But without uh, one to two million tons of coming from the Russia-Belarus area, it's going to leave the United States drastically short of its potash needs. While the Canadian producers are trying to ramp up production, it isn't that easy. Just, it's not a matter of just flipping a switch. But there'll soon be a Michigan solution. Michigan potash and salt are set to break ground on a $1.1 billion mine at this site near Everett in Osceola County. The deposit here in Michigan is the highest quality deposit in the known world. It uh, lays about 7,800 feet below the surface. It's not the sort of mine most picture. It's a series of wellheads 30 feet apart connected to pipes that travel nearly a mile and a quarter below ground. We simply pump water down into the ore body, dissolve it, bring it back up in a clear solution, and then through a cooling process, we're able to sort out the salt and the potash. Michigan Potash and Salt has cleared the regulatory hurdles. Phase one is expected to produce 650 tons of potash a year. Phase two will increase that to 2 million tons of potash annually enough to offset the losses from Belarus and Russia. I don't think people understand uh, the impact that this facility will have on, on not just the Michigan farmers, but the entire Eastern Corn Belt will see some relief from, uh, from when we start producing. And there are ripple effects to the project beyond boosting supply, like transportation costs. Anytime we have more suppliers, more producers, it's a more competitive market. And then we have less freight into it, too. That's the other thing that affects us now is the freight cost. Our domestic suppliers can do a better job than anywhere else in the world. And, and we have to be able to use our resources we have here in this country. Now, the impact won't be immediate. It'll take up to 30 months to get up to full production. But for farmers, it provides some light at the end of the tunnel. Near Everett in Osceola County, Joe Lafergie, News 8.